Hiya, your boy's got a new vacuum today. This one's a shark anti-hair wrap. The XL version with the big fat bin. So here it is, my new baby. This is the Sharky in lovely blue and silver. That's the different ways it can be used. And the key features, you've got anti-hair wrap, you've got duo clean, you've got powered lift away, and anti-allergen complete filtration. Right, enough rambling on here. Let's get straight to it. Oh no, I got catfish for a second. I thought that was going to be included, but it's not. It's not part of the packaging, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you've got the lovely eco-friendly packaging. I'm going to take everything out of the box and then show you what it comes with. So it comes with the hose. You've got the crevice tool. You've got the stair tool with the dusting brush. You've got the wand, of course. The main unit, of course. And the dual clean floor head. How to assemble the new Shark Anti-Hair Up XL vacuum. First, push your wand into the floor tool until it locks into place. Next, put on your main unit. It just slides on like so. After that, you can push the hose in until it clicks into place. The handle then goes into the wand. Clip your hose bracket onto the wand. Put your tools on the rear of the vacuum so the crevice tool goes on the right hand side along with the stair tool on the other side. These tools are friction fit so they do not click into place. And as for cable storage, you've got this hook which turns. You can wrap the cable around the top and the bottom hook. And to release the entire cable in one go, you can just turn that and release the whole thing. Sharky's assembled now. Let's give you a grand tour of the machine and a demonstration. So here are the handle controls. You have the power switch, which activates the machine, the headlights and the brush bar. Now as default setting for some reason out of the box was the hard floor setting. So when we choose either of the carpet power settings, the brush bar then speeds up. Because on hard floor mode, the brush is spin slower. And then you've got the good carpet setting as well, which gives you a bit more airflow out of these vents on either side of the handle. You've got a bit of suction leaking out the vents as well on the low power carpet setting. However, it's not as significant as the deep power carpet setting. However, if you select the hard floor setting, you do get 100% of the full suction at the cleaner head. So that's the controls out of the way. Now let's discuss the hose and one. What I like about the shark is every single feature is labeled. So those who don't know how to use a vacuum will know how to use it because of all the labels, okay? In case they press the wrong button on other vacuums. So right here, for example, you've got the handle release. What that does is it allows you to remove the hose like so, and then attach your desired tool of choice for cleaning in a handheld mode with the hose. Listen to the power of this thing. This shark has 20 or 25% more suction than the NZ801 UKT, which is a smaller version of the shark. So yeah, that's the hose. It's not the longest hose in the world. It does reach to a decent amount of a length. However, because of the design, the machine will topple over. However, that's what the power lift away feature is for, so you don't have that issue. What I like about the shark here is that the air path is a lot wider than the smaller versions. And if you want to use the wand, you've got the wand release button as well. So you can do just that. Reach into the corners of your room or even up high for any cobwebs that might be lurking around. I've got one right there actually. And I can just reach straight for it. Pop it back in and it's literally that simple. This clip right here just stops your hose from swinging around. But to be honest, in use, it does like to come apart. The powered lift away feature is one of my favourite features about the shark. So when you press that... It allows you to detach the vacuum unit so you can reach under the lowest of furniture because the unit itself is quite bulky, isn't it? It's not going to fit under beds or whatever. So that is an innovative design. Here you've got the bin release, so I'll press the dust cup release button. That allows you to detach your bin and cyclone. To empty your bin, you just press on this release button right there, then all the dirt falls out. What I like about the shark's emptying design is the dirt always, 100% of the time, falls out all in its full entirety. With the Dyson, there's a lot of weird fins and plastic bits sticking out in the bin, which likes to cling onto the dirt. So you've got to really shake the bin or sometimes reach in there or take the bin off the cyclone to clean it out further. But with the Shark, it's way more hygienic. Dyson does have the benefit, however, of having the release button on the top, whereas with the Shark, you got it on the bottom. But I like how the dirt falls out a lot easier on the Shark. You've got a single cyclone design right here, pressing these two buttons your lid opens up. This is designed to divorce the dust and dirt from the airflow and just fling it out into this bin right here. It's only a single cyclone, right? Yes, that might have its disadvantages of having dusty filters here and then, but you got way better airflow. It's not like a Dyson where you got the air pass dividing into multiple channels, bending the airflow and restricting the airflow as a result of that. But the shark, the air pad is much more simpler. The suction comes straight from the motor, goes up the cyclone and comes straight out into the hose down to clean ahead. The Dyson, the air pad is way more complicated than that. If you've got a simpler air path, you've got stronger airflow. 
What I like about these sharks is while they can fill the bin right up to the top before you need to empty it. Yes, it says the max fill line is there, but to be honest, you can get away with emptying it up to about here because that's where the cutout is before dirt actually builds up in the cycling area. Now, here's your filtration system. You've got a sponge filter right here. What I like about these sharks compared to Dyson's is that the shark having thicker sponge filters than Dyson's, it absorbs more dust and dirt into it and doesn't clog up as easy as a Dyson filter. In addition to that, you've got better airflow through these sponge filters. And it's not just that either, you've got a pad filter as well. So two stages of filtration after the cyclone. So, so far we've got three stages. There's your motor in there. So you're pressing this release catch, pull this grill off. That's your exhaust vent. That is your HEPA pleated filter, which has a nice secure lock on it, by the way. So you've got stage four filtration, which is another sponge. And you've got stage five, which is the HEPA filter that captures the most finest, smallest dust particles in the whole vacuum. And you've got seals all around the system as well. So you don't have any dust leaking through these filters because a lot of companies that make vacuums, they be like, oh, we've got HEPA filtration. But is it sealed though? Like the Sharks and Dysons have. Dyson used to do really nice sponge filters back in the days in their older models, but for some reason they drifted away from that. I don't know why, but the sponge filters certainly help to keep the suction constant for longer. Now let's talk about the beautiful Duo clean head. This is quite a modern, futuristic looking clean head, isn't it? So this orange roll at the front, that's your Duo clean design. Most vacuum cleaners have a wall in front of the brush bar, which snow plows lots of large debris. And then you have to lift the vacuum head up over the debris in order for it to pick it up. With a shark, this paint roller spins. Yeah, it's like a paint roller, but a thinner version. So when it spins, it picks up all the dust and dirt along with the larger bits like cereal as well without slow plowing it. This is your anti-hair at brush bar. It's got extremely stiff bristles, so it does a fantastic job of removing pet hair, lifting your carpet pile up, and doing a grand job overall. Now, what makes this thing an anti-hair app design? These flaps right here, they're not exactly rubber. I think they're more of a uh, nylon material. But these are just there to prevent hair from being wrapped around the brush bar tight because hair does get embedded deep into the roots of the bristles and clings onto the brush bar bristles even more. So that's what these flaps are there for, to help loosen the wrapping quantity of the hair around the brush bar. You've got a nice felt strip on the back, which helps to prevent any scattering of large debris back at the cleaner head. The Duo Clean front roller can be removed by pushing on this orange release catch. Then the roller just pops out like so. There's a comb behind here for this roller specifically, so hair can get wrapped around there. Check inside there as well, because hair can also get wrapped around that cargo thing. But yeah, as for the roller, I've washed these before with no problems. I'm not sure if you're meant to wash them, but I do anyways, and they come out fine. So how do you remove this brush bar? The answer is you don't. You're not really meant to, unfortunately. So what you can do instead is get a flat screwdriver or a coin to turn the plastic screws on the sole plate to have clear access to the brush bar and the inlet in case there's any blockages there as well. And there's your comb right on the back, which is what helps to dislodge the hair from the brush bar. This soft roller is the only thing you can wash on this entire cleaner head. Do not wash anything else, just this part, okay? Pop this all plate back on, tighten the plastic screws, and that's it. What I do like about the newer sharks is, you know these internal hoses, yeah? On the older sharks, they were split so commonly and render this whole entire floor head useless. There's your brush bar indicator light, which lights up green, when the machine's in use and the brush bar's spinning perfectly fine. But when that light goes red, it indicates that the brush bar's not going to turn properly and there's an obstruction. For some reason here, yeah, on these larger sharks, you've got like a rubber grip on the end of the wand. So it's not really nice to use these without an attachment for quick edge cleaning along your skirting boards on a tile floor, for example. The smaller sharks, like the NZ801, they don't have this, so you can use it without a attachment a lot easier. Because this just grips onto the surface too much. Look at it, it's such an elegant, modern looking vacuum, isn't it? I love it. It's beautiful. Let's just do a quick test run on this carpet. Look at the carpet, Lawrence. It grooms fantastically. It certainly feels like a hefty premium machine as well, like a serious bit of kit, you know what I mean? Look at that. Most vacuums these days, they don't have stiff bristles. So if you've got pets with really stubborn pet hair, or if you have really stiff carpet piles that need a strong brush bar to lift the carpet pile up, this shark is fantastic for that. Look at the headlight just illuminating all the dirt in the dark areas. Whoa, okay, as if it just picked up all that amount. Look at this.
I vacuumed yesterday, guys. Ooh, 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 that's only a small area. This carpet's only, what, a week old? Yeah, I've been doing mess tests on it, but I've been using really good vacuums like a Cebo Felix, Hoover Gwen Tunnel, Cebo X4, Kirby G6, Dyson DC17 on this carpet after the mess test, you know what I mean? But the sharks picked up a load of dirt. Thank you for watching my unboxing on this shark. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to support my channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm your host, Power 7 at 6, signing out. I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye for now. Have a beautiful day. Right, grab the Hoover.